What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another Stargate SG-1 review. And in this case, it's going to be a review for Season 7. So this is or this season packed quite a bit in all into one um, season. So not only do we have Jonas returning back to its homeworld to build international relations on his planet, but we have um, Daniel returning from the Ascended Plane of Being after being kicked out of the Ascended Realm because he tried to help the humans against Anubis. Um, so with all of that, we also have the growing power and threat of Anubis in the galaxy as he tries to conquer all the other system lords and the varying, they're varying vi uh, vying for power in order to defeat him. Um, so he, Anubis eventually turns his eyes on um, Earth because he believes them to have a weapon of the ancients which he wants to use to secure his dominance on the galaxy. Um, and throughout the episode we have um, the humans having a tenuous relationship between the Jaffa and the Tok'ra. So while Colonel O'Neill trusts the Jaffa more than the Tok'ra, um, he understands the benefits the Tok'ra brings. So all of that's still going on, on into play. And Eventually, they reach, um, Stargate Command receives intelligence that there is a planet that might have another repository, repository of knowledge along the lines of what we saw in, I think, the second season uh, when we first meet the Asgard. So they make it to the planet but quickly come under attack from Anubis' forces. So Colonel O'Neill gets that um, repository downloaded in his brain. And with all of that, um, they now have the um, domestic threat on Earth as far as the changing um, political structure. So we have a new president who wants to draw the line between what Sen or now Vice President Kinsey wants and the existing power of Stargate Command and the United States uh, military. So the military wants nothing to change because SG-1 has um, been operating the Stargate, but if they ever come public, they want to have uh, the new president wants to have a friendlier face. So they have um, Hammond uh, retire from Stargate Command, but this comes as Anubis starts his attack on Earth, which Kenzie, of course, finds um, convenient. But as the new uh, leader of SG 1 comes into her position, she realizes that it's a bigger galaxy and she can't just come in with her own agenda. She needs to trust the experience that and build upon the experience that Stargate Command already has, which is something that Kinsey was unwilling to do. So um, SG-1, or uh, this, and while all this is happening, Colonel O'Neill is processing the information in his brain. And as it turns out, they find a planet that might contain clues to the lost city of Atlantis. But as it turns out, his brain was directing him to a planet that still contains a viable power source for a weapon that's back on Earth. Um, and he uses the map on that planet to t tell the rest of the team that they need to go back to Earth, but be they're only there for the power source. Um, and SG-1 ultimately makes it back in time as um, TV tropes tend to work out, and they defeat Anubis' forces just in the nick of time with the ancient weapon, which is not the Lost City of Atlantis, but basically just an outpost. Um, and ultimately, they're unable, because they are they spent so much time to get to this weapon, they're unable to find a way to get the information out of Colonel O'Neill's mind, so he goes into frozen stasis. So, essentially, the implications here are that now that Anubis' forces are destroyed, there's going to be an, a new vie for power among the remaining system wars. Um, notably, I want to say you, Ball, and... Maybe a few other, I think Bustet, and a few other of the minor ones who are higher up in the hierarchy. So the ghoul threat is essentially winding down, and I guess we can now focus more on alliance building, um, dealing with the replicator threat with Asgard, and discovering more of the universe, and also focusing more on what this lost city is, and researching this ancient outpost that was um, I guess a mile or two underground so this season essentially not only took out a major ghoul threat but set up um, the next couple of seasons um, from here I actually am drawing a blame between what happens now 
um, and I think season eight and into later into I want to say maybe the last three seasons. So, or actually, we only have three seasons left. So eight, nine, and ten. So um, I think it's a transition into the Ori story arc, um, the new um, Stargate Command that ultimately goes back into military hands with. Um, I forget what the other general's name is, but we have a new team that's built with. Um, and I also forget the new um, um, captain or major or whoever he is who is essentially the new Colonel O'Neill, a younger version of him. Um, Colonel O'Neill, essentially, I think he gets promoted to general but ends up running Stargate Command for a while before the new general guy comes into play. Um, but essentially the replicator threat, I think, is settled and then we go into the story arc. And then by that time, the, we have the completion of season 10. So that's all there is for this particular review. So I want to say, um, as a precursor to the rest of the review, I think now that Anubis is, is essentially defeated, the rest of the gold thread is also going to wind down because um, there's there's no major threat anymore. And because SG-1 has proven that the that they can defeat any um, threat in the nick of time and because they're going to um, assist with a um, Jaffa uprising the power structure of the gold is ultimately going to deteriorate um, so as a bit of um, looking ahead so beyond season 10 so once I finish the rewatch of C um, Stargate SG-1 season 10 there's also two sequel movies um, Continuum and Arc of Truth so continue, and I always get it mixed up. I think Continuum um, um, settles the Ghoul threat once and for all because I think it's something to do with Ball and the System Lord Ball and his clones. And then Arc of Truth um, rounds out the Ori story arc with a weapon to take them out or ascend or something. I forget the exact storyline. And I also might have that backwards. So after I finish SU1, because I did rewatch the original Stargate within the past couple of months before I got into the SG-1 review I'm also going to um, rewatch those movies to complete the Stargate SG-1 story arc. Um, I may or may not get into a rewatch of Atlantis mostly because I think I've only seen a few episodes in the first season and then it kind of drops off for me um, just because, and I think I want to say it's not that it was boring. It's just that there's not much of a story arc. To, I was it was mo mostly just a spinoff, and I didn't really um, get that interested in it. But I might may do a similar thing with as SG One, where I do a key episode watch through. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so going, so as I mentioned, going into the rest of um, Stargate SG One, so we're gonna have the rest of the Ghoul story arc, um, and then the rise and downfall of the Ori and then continuum and arc of truth that resolves all the remaining storylines to complete the Stargate SG-1 story. So that's all there is for this particular review. So um, as far as episodes coming up, uh, look out for potentially another WandaVision review. I haven't seen the episode as of this recording, um, but I'll but if there's enough to do a review, then I'll have that out. If not, I'll probably do a hot take or something on Twitter um, there and wait for the end of the first season to do a full review of the season. Uh, look out for Headphones you know, News for January coming out soon. Um, for patrons, look out for a um, back-end podcast update um, for something coming up. Uh, when all of that's settled, um, I'll bring it up on the review that with when that change happens as well so everyone's on the same page as that for that update um but that's really all there is for now um and of course if you guys are fans of star wars or star wars video games um you can keep track of my um gameplay uh playthrough of star wars knights of the old republic to the sith lords but this time it's on the dark side um so I'm regularly po uploading those to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pateln01. And I'll do a review of that for the dark side per from the part dark side's perspective when I finish that game. Um, 
So that's all there is for that. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or of your own, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this episode, and until next time.